We don't have to look hard in the world today to see that we are facing great turmoil. However, we too can be encouraged as David was when he said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. If you're watching on social media, we invite you to come in along as you're watching today. We also encourage you to share our broadcast with your friends and your family so they can join with us for this time of encouragement as well. As we turn our hearts toward worship today, remember, we can find hope in Jesus Christ. Following our worship, our general overseer, Brother Oscar Pimentel, will join us for an encouraging message about hope. In my moments of fear Through every pain Every tear There's a God Who's been faithful To me When my strength Was all gone When my heart Had no song Still in love He proved faithful promised is true what I thought was impossible I've seen my God do he's been faithful His love and mercy I see Though in my heart I have questioned I've even failed to believe Oh, He's been faithful Faithful to me He's faithful Looked away the many times I could not pray. Still, my God, He was faithful to me. The days I spent so selfishly reaching out for what pleased me, even. God was faithful to me, oh, every time I come back to Him, He was waiting with those open arms, and I seen once again. Faithful, so faithful to me. Oh, looking back, His love and mercy I see. Though in my heart I have questioned, I've even failed to believe, yet He's been faithful. Faithful to 
me Hello my dear brothers and sisters it is a pleasure and a blessing to meet with you once again uh, through these means I want to welcome you uh, today and it is my privilege and an honor for me to be able to share uh, a thought from the word of God my hope is that it will be a blessing to you and an encouragement also uh, my main thought for today is Jesus Christ is coming again. Amen. I hope that you have this hope in your heart. I hope that you believe this. I hope that uh, you are still confidently expecting uh, the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us, and I will use these as uh, scripture references today. Uh, scriptures that are found in 1st John chapter 3 and verse 3 and also 1st John chapter 4 and verse 17 and various other scriptures that I hope to use uh, throughout the message the Bible says in 1st John 3 and 3 and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure 1st John 4 and 17 Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as He is, so are we in this world. The definition of hope is a feeling that what is wanted uh, will happen. It is a desire that is accompanied by expectation. Uh, hope is not a wish. Hope is not a fantasy but the hope that we have can confidently be expected because the object of this hope is real for the Christian hope does not mean a strong probability but it is a real and confident expectation based upon a trust in God who the Bible tells us cannot lie uh, People who do not have a biblical eye view have a different perspective of what hope is. To them, it is simply a strong probability of something happening. If you were to take a survey in the world today and ask people what they hope in, some people may express uh, that they hope in uh, peace, that they hope in stability, that they hope in happiness, that they have hope of fulfillment, that they have hope of uh, being respected, that they have hope, uh, some of fame, etc., and so on and so forth. And you know, the world and the devil have their uh, hope that they uh, present to people, but all too often that hope uh, leads or ends with disappointments. But the hope that we're talking about today is a real hope, once again, and as we read in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 3, uh, John the Beloved speaks of a hope that uh, he knows a little something about. He speaks of a hope that is uh, with him and he speaks of a hope that is also in him. And he speaks of a hope that is known uh, to him and by him. There in 1 Peter chapter 1, the Bible tells us that Peter speaks of a lively hope which is the same hope that John is speaking of here, a lively hope because Jesus Christ uh, resurrected from the dead. Uh, this hope, uh, of course, that uh, we have, we know that it is not an earthly hope, but it is, in fact, a heavenly hope. Praise God. A heavenly hope that is confident uh, to be uh, brought to fruition because Jesus Christ is alive and well today. Well, what was this hope that John speaks of and that he writes of in 1 John chapter 3 in 3? It seems to me when we read uh, 1 John uh, chapter 3 in verse 2 that he, that he really kind of sums it up in these three things. That Christ shall appear, that we shall be like Him, and that we shall see Him as he is. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. This was the hope that he was speaking of. 
What a wonderful hope. What a real hope. Uh, how was it that John had this hope? How was it that so many others throughout the ages have had this same hope? And how is it that you and I have this hope? You know, there in Luke chapter 24 and verses 50 and on, the Bible uh, gives us an account of the time when Jesus uh, led them out to Bethany. The Bible says that he led them. Perhaps uh, uh, we would find that he led them up a hillside and led them to the summit uh, there at that place called Bethany. And it was there, the Bible says in Luke chapter 24, that Christ blessed them. And while he was blessing them, the Bible also tells us that he was carried away in a cloud into heaven. Uh, they were so blessed at that time uh, by the hand of Christ that the Bible also records that uh, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Did you hear that? They returned to Jerusalem with great joy due to the blessing that Christ gave them uh, on that hillside there near Bethany. Uh, they returned uh, with that blessing that Christ had given them uh, to Jerusalem, that, that city that had just been dyed red with the blood of the precious Lamb of God. They returned to uh, Jerusalem, that place where Jesus Christ had uh, just a few days before been crucified. But they returned there with great joy. That blessing that they had received uh, allowed them to return to that city of persecution, that city of uh, havoc, that city of tribulation, uh, that city of threatening and slaughter. Yes, to that same city, the Bible says that they return there with great joy. I don't know if you've ever noticed how God's blessings in our lives allow us to live a life of great joy regardless of the circumstances of life. The blessings of the Lord in our life uh, give us uh, new vistas, uh, give us a, a, a new uh, view or perspective of life. You know, only the blessings of God can rise above uh, whatever it is that uh, we're going through or whatever it is that uh, the circumstances are around us, the blessings of Christ in our lives and in our heart. Just like He blessed them on that day and they were able to return to Jerusalem with great joy swelling up in their hearts and in their lives. So uh, Christ today uh, is able to bless us and strengthen us so that we also can have great joy in the day in which we're living in. Great joy because we have a great hope. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, Paul said that if in this life only uh, we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Why did he say this? Well, Paul said it because some had said that there is no resurrection. If that was the case, then we simply have believed about a Christ who used to be alive but now is dead. How miserable would that be? There's no hope in that, is there? But Paul knew what John knew, that Christ had risen from the dead, and that even uh, today He stands at the right uh, hand of the Father, ever in a seating for you and I. Praise the Lord. On that hillside in Bethany, there in Acts chapter 1, verses 9 and 11, this is what John knew. He was there, as Peter uh, was also there. Uh, when the Lord on that hillside uh, went up into the heavens and was uh, taken away on a cloud and disappeared from view. But the Bible states the record that uh, as he spoke these things through, uh, to them, while they beheld him, he was taken up and a cloud received Christ out of their sight. And the Bible says that while they stood there looking steadfastly uh, toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them, uh, by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. Yes, that same Jesus. 
Uh, it's no wonder that John writes later on in 1 John uh, chapter 3 and verse 3 about this hope. Because he was there when Jesus was taken up. And he was there when uh, those men dressed in white apparel said unto them, This same Jesus shall come in like manner as you have seen him go away. What a glorious a hope that we have. Amen. And that, that hope and that promise has not changed today. It is still the same as it was on that day uh, there on the hillside of Bethany that this same Jesus will return. And that is our hope today, knowing and confidently expecting that Christ will soon uh, return for His church. Praise God. He shall appear, is what John said. Uh, we shall see His face, is what John said. Uh, we shall be like Him, uh, were the words in the writings of John uh, there in 1 John 3 and 3. Praise God. You'll remember that Jesus Christ in speaking to his disciples. Uh, said to them as he knew the time of his departure was drawing nigh. And he knew the hearts of his disciples and how they felt. He said to them in John chapter 14 uh, verses 1 through 3. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, listen to this. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Did you hear that, dear saint? Jesus Christ, speaking to his disciples, said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Uh, we have a glorious, glorious future ahead of us in the not too distant future. Uh, knowing that Christ has promised that if he went, he would also come again. And that he would take us unto himself, that where he is, there uh, we also may be with him. This is the hope uh, that I speak about today. Uh, this is the hope that John spoke about. And that he said that if any man has this hope, he purifies himself, even as he is pure. The Bible tells us we shall be like him. John said it does not yet appear what we shall be like. And I don't know all the ins and outs of what we will be like, but isn't it enough today, uh, dear brothers and sisters, to know that we shall be like Him, praise God, that we shall see Him face to face, praise the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53, portions of the scripture there, the Bible says we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. And I want to read uh, out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 17. Follow along with me if you have your Bibles there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, starting in verse 14 through 17. The Bible says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we do believe, do we not, brothers and sisters, that Jesus died for our sins on the cross of Calvary, and He rose again after His death. The writer says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive 
and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Uh, we shall ever be with the Lord. Jesus is coming back. You know, uh, we don't know the day and we don't know the hour. But one thing we are uh, sure of and are certain uh, and reassured of is that Jesus Christ is coming back again to rapture away his church. Praise God. And it behooves each and every one of us uh, to heed the words of John who said, Every man that has this hope in him should purify himself and be pure as he is pure. Praise God. As he is, so are we in the world. These are the words that you find in 1 John chapter 4 and 17. Let me repeat these words. As he is, that is Christ, as he is, so are we in this world. You know, to have this hope that we're speaking of, that he shall appear, that we shall be like him, that we shall see him face to face, to have this kind of hope moves a person to action. When you know that somebody is uh, coming over to visit you or visit me at my house, uh, when we know that someone is coming and we expect them to uh, uh, arrive any moment, uh, all too often we, uh, we make ready, do we not? Uh, we, we clean the house, we uh, mop the floors, we vacuum the carpet, we uh, wipe down the windows, we... Uh, do all sorts of things in preparation to receive whoever it is that is coming because we have a hope and we have been notified that they're coming to visit us. We do all of that uh, in knowing that a friend or an acquaintance or somebody is coming to our house. How much more now, knowing through Scripture that Jesus has promised that He will come again, does it behoove us to make ready for the coming of Jesus Christ? Again, we don't know the day and we don't know the hour, but that He is coming is a certainty. And we are assured of it through Scripture, through the words of Christ Himself, through the uh, men that stood there in white apparel, through the writings of Peter and, and John and so many others, that He is coming again. Let us be ready. Amen. Praise God. First John chapters or chapter 2 and verse 28. This is what the word says. And now little children abide in him that when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. You see we want to have everything in order. Not be ashamed when He comes. Uh, not uh, have anything to be ashamed of uh, when we stand in the presence of God. Uh, he is coming. And the Bible says, abide in Him. You know, Jesus also said that we were, uh, that He was uh, the, the true vine and His Father was the husbandman and we were the branches and he, he called for us to abide in Him. Praise God. Which means to live in Him and He in us. In another place, Jesus spoke and He said that if we keep His commandments, that the Father and Himself would come and abide in us. And this is the kind of a relationship that Jesus wants us to have. One that we live in Him, that we abide in Him a day and night, uh, being as He was, being as He is in this world, were the words of John. As He is, so are we in this world. Uh, we should be holy. We should be uh, righteous, we should be clean, we should be pure, we should be uh, uh, occupied doing the work of the Lord, living for Him, glorifying Him, and magnifying Him in all that we do, in all that we say, in every one of our actions and reactions. Praise God, living, knowing that He is coming, and He is coming soon. I want to read also First John uh, chapter 3, verses 4 
through 9. The Bible says, And every man, excuse me, verses 4 through 9, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. In him is no sin. This is why uh, John says, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. And he goes on to write these things. And, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever, listen here, abideth in him. And isn't this again what he calls us to do? Abide in me and I in you. Praise God. Whosoever abideth in him, the Bible says, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Uh, this is why he was manifested. Uh, to destroy the works of Satan. Uh, not to save us in our sins, but to save us from our sins, that we might uh, be purified and clean in his presence. He goes on to say, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Praise the Lord. Uh, how wonderful the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it tells us the truth that in him is no sin. And that we uh, that have been saved have not been saved in our sin, but... Uh, Saved from our sin. To live a life uh, that is uh, free of fear. Uh, there in uh, Luke chapter 1 in verses 74 and 75. We read that God has granted to us that we uh, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies. Uh, might uh, serve him without fear in holiness and in righteousness all the days of our life. Praise the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, there are things a person uh, can do. There are things a person must do to be ready. We're getting ready uh, for the coming of the Lord. We're getting ready to leave this whole world. Amen. This, is, this, this place, this world, there's that song that we sing. It is not our home. We're only here temporarily. And Christ has left us to do a work and to get as many people saved as possible. But this world is not uh, our home. This world is not our final resting place. And there are things that we must do in order to be ready. Things that we can do. Abide in Him. Uh, purify ourselves. Purge ourselves. Uh, lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets us and yield ourselves unto the Lord and obey His every command and just surrender to Him so that as He is, so uh, can we also be in this world. I want to finish up with this here. I read a story. Um, I don't recall today where I read it, but it was uh, recent in the last few days. And uh, the story spoke of a wealthy businessman who hired a man to come and keep and maintain his property, his, his house, his, uh, uh, his land and such. On any given day, uh, this man that was hired was, was found to uh, consistently and constantly be, be cleaning and maintaining and doing the upkeeping uh, to this wealthy man's uh, house and land. One day an acquaintance of this wealthy man came by and he spoke to the hired hand and he said to him, day after day I see you out here 
laboring, uh, toiling and working and keeping this place here in, in immaculate shape. Yet months have gone by and I've not once seen the owner uh, come. The hired hand uh, replied to him, Yes, sir, it's been well over a year that the man who hired me hasn't come home. The acquaintance said to him, Still you clean it as though he were to, to arrive tomorrow. To which the hired hand said, Today, sir, today. I hope that we can prepare today. Not as if the Lord were returning tomorrow, but as though the Lord were returning today. Working, not as He is coming tomorrow, but as though He were returning today. Uh, purifying ourselves, uh, surrendering ourselves to the Lord, making sure everything is in order not thinking that Christ will return tomorrow but today sirs today may the Lord bless you may the Lord keep you we are so grateful you chose to worship with us today if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord we encourage you to invite him into your life today remember no matter the circumstances of this life God is faithful and we can find the hope that we are searching for in him May God bless you, your families, and his people all over the world.